So the process of hemodialysis is a process where the machine cleans our blood artificially of poisons and replenishes some of the salts that we need. In order to do dialysis, in particular hemodialysis, we need access to a large vein in the body. There are natural veins that we have in our neck and our groin that sometimes the radiologists or the surgeons can create uh, access insertions into, so dialysis lines. But uh, the ideal process is to have uh, an artificial ma vein made by the surgeons and that is called a fistula. So a fistula is a joining together and what they do is they join the side of an artery onto the vein and then the high pressure from the artery allows that vein to expand and that creates an artificial environment where the nurses can go ahead and needle that vein three times a week or as is required in order to allow blood to flow onto the machine and then the machine can do its job and clean the blood. It is important to establish which arm the access is going to go into so that that arm can be protected, especially in patients that are diagnosed with chronic kidney disease well ahead before dialysis is needed. Because if we continue to use that arm for venipuncture or needling or intravenous insertion or blood tests, those veins scar up. And as those veins scar up, then they don't allow us to expand anymore. Hemodialysis means to clean the blood. The machine used draws the patient's blood from the body and is passed through a dialyzer that performs the function of a normal working kidney. The exchange process begins with the patient performing the necessary infection prevention steps, which includes thorough hand washing and drying, direct contact avoidance with germ prone items, and frequent use of hand sanitizer, and the cleaning of access points during the exchange. As with other forms of dialysis and treatment, the logging of key vital information is recorded, which can be used later for patient or healthcare team review. Information such as weight, pulse, blood pressure, temperature, and exchange durations represent some of the data which may be captured before, during, and after. In addition, readings are taken as it relates to the equipment and levels prior to commencing and testing of fluid supplies to and from the machine to ensure no contamination. After all the machine supplies have been organized, the patient begins by prepping the machine. This includes the powering on, loading of all the dialysate and saline solution, and the installing of the dialyzer while ensuring all supplies have not expired and are correctly identified prior to usage. Saline is drawn for use before and after the exchange to flush the access points along with a blood thinner that is used and administered by the machine automatically. After all the tubing is correctly installed and the machine is priming, the patient begins the process of preparing all the supplies that allows them to connect to the machine. As you can see, organization and routine is what makes the process easier day after day for patients. However, throughout the process, patients have a step-by-step -step guide that walks them through should they become unsure. The patient applies a disinfectant to the fistula and allows it to dry completely prior to the insertion of the catheters, which is also known as needling. They then prepare the access point by carefully removing any previous scabbing to allow entry of the catheter needles. Each catheter is carefully inserted and secured in place, then flushed out with saline solution. Both are clamped off prior to the exchange and then are connected to the machine, and then clamps removed. To ensure that the catheter does not accidentally disconnect during the process, the patient will secure all lines and the access arm is comfortably positioned. Blood pressure is once again recorded and the patient begins to settle in for the exchange, during which time many patients sleep or rest, enjoy a book, watch TV, or take part in online activities, or simply stay in contact with friends and family. Patients can expect to receive full training with home hemodialysis, which will last anywhere from three to eight weeks. All aspects are covered from machine operation, proper needling for vascular access, to ordering supplies and more. One of the other home dialysis that we, that is sort of to me is the Cadillac of dialysis treatments is what we call nocturnal home hemo. So nocturnal dialysis where people will actually dialyze themselves all night, five nights out of the week. The machine is a very silent machine and it allows people to maintain a complete independence and freedom during the day to carry on with their lives. There are multiple studies to show 
that certain aspects of chronic kidney disease, in particular blood pressure, difficulty with sleeping, what we call sleep apnea, certain salt parameters such as calcium and phosphorus and metabolic bone disease and quality of life are a lot better with nocturnal dialysis. Some of the challenges with home dialysis is getting people onto the machine itself. It is time consuming where they have to hook the machine on, prime the machine, turn it off after their dialysis treatment, and then store their supplies. I usually teach them parts of the machine so they know what each part does and how to set up the machine and all the emergency procedures. The only difficulties that I actually did find was being confident in myself. Uh, this is the first time actually doing the treatment on my own. And, uh, but after practice, you know, you do it every day, uh, it just became second nature. It is quite advantageous to have a partner at home because in the event that anything goes array, especially if people lose consciousness, if their blood sugar drops, if their blood pressure drops, there's always somebody else to call 911. We prefer one family member to be here with the patient when it is, when during training because if there is something goes wrong with the patient at least to give the blood back or um, just to disconnect the patient from the line so if there is nobody that's fine but if there is somebody we will train the family member only for the just to manage the emergencies we do have 24 hour uh, assistance available for the patients so they're even though they're independent on dialysis they're not alone we have a multidisciplinary team to support them and a nurse on call 24 7. Oh, the staff here has been great the support that I get is excellent. I have a nurse come in put the needles in for me and the rest is simple it's easy once you catch on it's no problem I got no pain and then I wouldn't know I had kidney problems if it wasn't for being on dialysis. Travel and long-term plans for transportation are also challenges. What I've been able to do is at least take two nights free. So I, would, what I did that last summer. Um, so what I did was is I dialyzed three nights in a row and then I took two nights off and then I came back. I've been to Fort Lauderdale last year for two years, two weeks, sorry, and I'm going back again in April for another two weeks. I can travel wherever I like. I can go to Italy, I can go to Mexico, I can go to Montreal, but I just have to think of it in advance. I can't just pick up the phone and book a trip for next week. I think it is the, the Cadillac and I think it is ideal situation where you can put patients on home dialysis for them to ma enjoy and maintain a quality of life but also improve some of the aspects of chronic kidney disease. You have more time for yourself. If you're still working, you can work a full day and uh, everything is better. I spend more time with my family because uh, before I was working, I had to leave early, I had to come here. By the time I get home, my kids were sleeping. Previously, I had no energy. Uh, I was very limited in my diet. I took a multitude of uh, drugs and medications. And now I have cleared all of my medications. I take nothing, really. And uh, I can eat anything under the sun. I'm not really limited except for maybe uh, drinking. You know, like I really can't ex go into excess there. But other than that, you know, and I have energy. Like, you know, I don't climb a flight of stairs and huff and puff at the top of the stairs. Like I can climb those stairs and keep on going. Like run down the hallway or take laps around the, you know, the block. Like it has, made me feel oh so much better. Made me feel actually human again is what I would say.